found the best food in our hometown of Auckland, New Zealand. New Zealand is home to over 200 ethnic communities. Food from every corner of the globe makes our food culture vibrant and diverse. This is our fourth video from New Zealand and we're in Auckland. Watch out for delicious Indian chaat, killer spicy Sichuan noodles and authentic Māori food. In this four-part series, we're travelling all over New Zealand to show you the best food from our homeland. From iconic Kiwi snacks to rare foods, plus a ton of Aotearoa's breathtaking beauty. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. Auckland's an incredibly cultural diverse city so we were born and bred here and it's really nice to be home for a little bit to film some content and show you some of our favorite stuff so growing up here we have all sorts of food on the menu so there is over 200 200, 200 ethnicities living in Auckland because there's been a lot of um, immigration and migration here over the years so we want to show you some of the best food today some of the stuff that we love eating when we're back home in New Zealand let's go Auckland is a beautiful city with volcanoes everywhere and a lot of water all around it, surrounded by harbours. So we've come right down to the wharf on the harbour for our first thing we're going to eat and that is hangi, which is a, um, a traditional food cooked by the indigenous people of New Zealand, the Māori. And this is actually quite hard to find in a restaurant. It's very uncommon to be able to go somewhere and purchase hangi. So we were really, really stoked when we saw that this place, the Māori Kitchen, had opened up down here right on the wharf serving hangi. We'll tell you more about how they cook it, which is a pretty neat technique, but let's order some first. So we ordered the works, the full shebang. So we've got some pork here, there's some mesclun, some salad leaves on the top, a couple of potatoes, this here is kumara which is sweet potato and then we've got some pumpkin. Now look, this is rapidly getting cold so I'm just going to get in first and talk later. Oh, underneath the pork there's also some stuffing. I've got some pork, some stuffing and pumpkin on this mouthful. Mmm, mmm, really simple flavours, but really vibrant flavours, so the pumpkin is really sweet and creamy, that stuffing has got a ton of herbs inside, so a lot of thyme I can taste, and then that pork is so juicy, and it really just falls apart, it's not dry at all. Now, the team at the Māori Kitchen are really intent on cooking hangi the traditional way. So what they do is they take these stones, stones which have been in the family for generations, they heat those stones up with uh, manuka timber and then the food is placed on top of the hot stones to cook with earth piled on top of the food. And so it essentially steams and cooks in this underground oven for about seven hours. The results are amazing. The meat is really smoky and the flavors are really, really pure and vibrant. And look at that, there's a whole bunch of cabbage down there too. So we've got cabbage and stuffing. But the reason we're having this hangi, so there are some hangi shops around Auckland, not many though at all. And most of them now cook their hangi in a sort of a stainless steel above ground gas powered hangi cooker. But these guys do it properly. It's underground, so the process that Sheena talked about, that is what they use to cook their hangi. And outside of the, the home or the marae, um, it's really hard to get traditional hangi like this at a restaurant. So this is pretty special. Mm. Really, really good. So because we are eating that hangi right here, 
on the wharf with the ships right behind us. This is not where the hangi pits are, so we couldn't show you the process of the hangi being cooked, but that was an awesome start to this video. So now we're gonna head off and we're gonna show you some more of the um, other cultures here. So we said there's over 200 different cultures living in Auckland, so there is a massive variety of food to have. Next up, we're going for some Indian street food. Now, this is one of my favorite types of street food in the world, and I love that we can get some really good stuff here in New Zealand as well. So, this place we're going to, we've eaten at before. It's really good, so let's go check it out. New Zealand doesn't have a street food culture, so you do have to go to restaurants to eat foods which are typically street food dishes in their countries of origin. We are at Mumbai Chaat and these guys do really good chaat. I am so ready for it. Let's go. We've got two dishes and these are two of our absolute favourites. So this is Dahi Puri and this is a um, samosa chaat. So under there is a samosa hiding under all those ingredients. Now both of these dishes we've had in videos when we've been in India. We absolutely love them both so it's definitely high on our list to get when we're back here in New Zealand. But I'm going to start with this dahi puri. So the puri is a little sort of puffed bread thing. You can see where it's been cracked with a um, like a thumbs crack through and then inside it's filled absolutely filled with curd. Let's get this one. There's a bit, no, wait, this one. <laughs> Here we go. So you can see there's a bit of curd just spilling out. Then it's got some sieve all over the top, which are these little chickpea noodles that are broken up all over the top. It's got some um, tamarind chutney, that's the brown one. And then the green one that's hiding in there is um, probably a coriander chutney. And there's some fresh coriander on top too. Now, it's all about one delicious explosion of flavor here. So I'm gonna put the whole thing in in one go. Oh. Mm. Oh man. Oh, that is so good. It is a burst of flavor. I forgot to say as well, under that curd, so under the yogurt, there's some potato, some um, spiced curried potato. So it's got a creaminess from that, a burst of flavor. The, um, the chutney, the tamarind chutney is tangy, a little bit spicy with chili. And then the curd is just super fresh and delicious and really tangy as well. Man, they are a burst of flavor and I love the puri on the outside because it's very, very crunchy. All those flavors and textures go really well together. How good does the samosa chat look? So we have got a ton of that um, sieve on top, which is the chickpea noodles. There's some drizzles of chutney, so tamarind chutney and the same coconut, oh, coriander and mint chutney, sorry, that uh, Thomas had in the dahi puri. And then it's hiding underneath that samosa. So a samosa is a deep fried pastry that's stuffed with a potato and you can see that it's been broken up and I'm just gonna be able to get really delicious mouthfuls of this samosa and mixed in with it is also some chole which is um, a chickpea dish. I can spot some peas too that must have come from the inside of the samosa. All right I just gotta get in. It's got a beautiful heat to it. It's a little bit spicy. Those chickpeas are so soft. They just turn into a creamy mush in your mouth. And you've got that vibrant chutney. The tamarind chutney is really sweet. The coriander mint chutney is really um, zingy. And then that samosa is really good. The potato is super creamy. I want to go for another bite. All right. Mm. That potato, there's some really um, big chunks of onion in there and they're really sweet and soft. And the spices are just really intense and flavoursome. So the guys at Mumbai Chat make everything from scratch, so all of the chutneys. And you can really taste the quality in that. Oh, this is such a good snack. Holy moly, that food was so delicious. Now we forgot to tell you before, 
that chat is a general term for savory snacks in India and those were so authentic for a second I felt like I was back in India and I think that's what's so brilliant about Auckland it's so diverse and you can get a taste of all these different cuisines it's one of the things I love about it <laughs> heaps of Chinese restaurants in Auckland and there are loads of restaurants that are regionally specific. So we are heading to one of our favourite spots in the city. They specialise in Sichuan cuisine. Now Sichuan food is known for being really pungent and intense and ferociously spicy. This is one of our favorite places to come and open for this particular dish. This is the Dan Dan noodle. So this is an incredibly spicy noodle dish and look at all this spice in there and all that chili oil sitting in there. But what we've got is some pork, some hand pulled um, wheat noodles and that's all swimming in this beautiful chili sort of oil and chili soup. And it's laced with a lot of Sichuan peppercorns, a lot of garlic it's going to be an absolute punch of flavor and to go with that we got some classic pork and chive dumplings and they are also absolutely covered in that spice so look at all that chili on there and there's a little bit of spring onion cut up and well that's all just swimming in sort of a, a simple um, soy sauce and and chili oil soup as well but for me it's all about these dan dan noodles so i'm just going to dive right in and get a huge Oh, look at it. So all of that soupy, oily goodness is just coating those noodles. Oh yeah. You can, the smell from this is unreal. It's very uh, deep in its spice, so it's really getting into my nose. Mm. Oh. oh, that is good. Sichuan peppercorns make your uh, mouth go numb so straight away my tongue has a really numb feeling on it really nice and spicy but not crazy so that you can't taste the flavors so there's a lot of sweetness um, the pork is beautiful Ooh. okay that spice catches up that just went from my tongue down to my throat oh these are so good and this is our favorite place to get this dish in Auckland this is a uh, well, it's not overly common, but relatively common here in Auckland to find this this style of cuisine. And this place always, always does the best version of it. Mm. Unbelievably good. One of my favorite things about this dish is the smell of it. You can really smell that. <laughs> chili and that garlic and that Sichuan pepper so that all those um, really bold flavors that Sichuan province is known for in its cuisine um, and why are they called Dan Dan noodles so back in the day the street vendors who used to sell these noodles used to balance them on a pole called a Dan Dan so a Dan Dan pole um, and they'd wander up and down the streets and sell their noodles um, like that so that's why they're called Dan Dan noodles because of the pole that used to balance all the noodles but I've got to get into my second favorite dish, or e favorite, equal favorite, um, these delicious looking dumplings. So we ordered the pork and chive um, dumplings, and they're just wallowing in this really um, dark looking sauce, so full of chili oil and a little bit of black vinegar, soy, and then a ton of dried uh, chili over the top. All right. There's a really beautiful sweetness that comes out of that. It's really, really spicy. The chili is hitting me at the back of the throat, but the dumpling skins are really soft. Still have a bit of texture though. 
and that filling. The pork and chai filling is super flavoursome. Oh, I could eat about 50 of those. Absolutely incredible meal. It was mm -hmm. so good actually that we tacked on a whole lot more dishes and had a feast. My mouth is on fire on and it's tingling. I can't really feel my tongue <laughs> at this point. Super, super good. And now we're going for something really interesting, a bit of a take on some food from one of the Pacific Islands. We've decided to go outdoors for our next snack. It's a really nice day here in Auckland, so we've gone out into the sun and we're sitting in the Domain, which is the big gardens right near the heart of the city. We've got a stunning view out over the Auckland Harbour and we're sitting right beside the Auckland War Memorial Museum, which is one of the most gorgeous buildings in Auckland. But what we've got is a pie. Now we've had a lot of pies in this New Zealand series because these are really iconic here. So savory pies are just a real massive thing in New Zealand. But this pie is really, really unique and unusual in that it's a polusami pie. Now polusami is a Samoan dish which is made up of taro leaves, uh, coconut milk and corned beef. Now this is very unique. I've never seen um, a pie anything like this. Normally in New Zealand it's a beef mince or a steak pie or a chicken pie, not a polusami pie. And this looks super buttery. So I think this is gonna be really interesting. Holy moly, I'm so excited to try this polusami pie. So even though Auckland is a city with the largest Polynesian population in the world, it's really, um, not that common to find Polynesian restaurants. The best food is found in the home. So when we heard about this polusami pie, we knew we had to get in. It's quite weighty, really hefty. All right, and that flaky pastry, look at that. Okay. Mmm. 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 Look at that filling. So you can see in there, all of that corned beef, that's that pink meat there, the corned beef, and on the top is the luau. So the luau is the um, coconut milk and taro leaves mixture. I've got pie all over my face. The flaky pastry is so buttery and soft. Oh man, this pie is good. Mmm. Mmm. So the texture of the filling is just really soft and mushy. The taro leaves and um, coconut milk mixture, the luau, is almost custardy um, and it's really soft. Those leaves are just melt in your mouth. And then you've got the texture of the corned beef. It's not, it's just really soft and very savory in flavor. That's a really good combo. Chicken. No. Just 